Good morning, Liberty. Welcome to the Fast Friday edition of the show for June 21st, 2019. Today, we're talking about arbitrary power, or what many founders called usurpation. This is when government exercises powers it was never authorized to exercise in the first place. In a constitutional system, that means it's exercising powers that were not delegated to it in the Constitution. It does it by force. It does it by fiat. And the warning that I want to talk about today, it's the same warning that comes from five different leading founders over a period of a couple of decades. And surprisingly enough, some of these founders were definitely at extreme odds with each other at various points in their career and lives. But the warning is still consistent. That is, if you turn a blind eye to arbitrary power or usurpation, no matter how big or small, it's an incredibly dangerous precedent. But first, before getting to that, of course, my name is Michael Bolden. We are broadcasting live here as we do every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time here from my home office and studio in downtown Los Angeles for the 10th Amendment Center. All of our archives are over at 10thamendmentcenter.com slash goodmorningliberty. That's where you can find the video versions of the show, whether it's YouTube, Periscope, Twitch, DLive, Facebook, BitChute, or the uh, podcast editions, iTunes, uh, Spotify, Google, and elsewhere. I appreciate everyone, whether you're joining me live or you're watching later on the archives. I'm grateful for all the thumbs up, all the smashing of the likes, the comments, the subscribes, the bell notifications, the reviews on iTunes and elsewhere. It's all really awesome. But since this is the Fast Friday edition of the show, let's see if I can knock this out in 10 to 15 minutes. I'm not necessarily going to go through any of these founders' warnings in any order of preference. I'm just going to go through them by order of date when they were written or spoken about. And uh, we're going to start out here with John Dickinson, the penman of the revolution. He wrote a series of uh, letters. I think there were 12 of them called Letters from a Farmer in Pennsylvania in opposition to the Townsend Acts. And in letter number nine, he signs off and every letter had a different signature or I think almost everyone did. And this one had, it's a Latin phrase, and then he has the translation. He says, oppose a disease at its beginning, because if you let the disease get out of control, what's going to happen? And the disease he talks about is arbitrary power. Exercises of emergency powers, in this case, are going to go a long way to destroying freedom. And he gives this example about Spain, and I think it's called their Cortes. My pronunciation, I'm sure, is totally wrong. But he writes, Spain was once free. Again, he was writing this in 1767. The Cortes resembled our parliaments. No money could be raised on the subject without their consent. And then eventually, one of the kings who was at war with the Moors asked for some emergency powers. He asked if he might be allowed for, quote, that emergency only to raise more money without assembling the Cortes, because obviously they couldn't raise money without the consent of the representatives of the people. There was a great deal of opposition. That's what Dickinson tells us. But the majority ended up voting to give up that emergency power. And that was the precedent that destroyed freedom there. He says, this single concession was a precedent for other concessions of the like kind until at last the crown obtained a general power of raising money in cases of necessity. From that period, the Cortes ceased to be useful. The people ceased to be free. The second one, we're going to 1771 when Samuel Adams was writing in the Boston Gazette in October as Candidus. And he talks about primarily his concerns about growing executive power, but I think it's applicable to basically everything. Then he writes this, the liberties of our country, the freedom of our civil constitution, are worth defending at all hazards, and it is our duty to defend them against all all attacks. Mind you, they were talking about the unwritten constitution, the ancient constitution, which many called it. And he says it's not it's not just a good idea to oppose, viola to oppose violations of the constitution. It's duty. And it's not just duty to oppose the big ones or ones that affect you or me personally. It's our duty to defend them against all attacks. 
He goes on, he says, it will bring an everlasting mark of infamy on the present generation, enlightened as it is, if we should suffer them to be wrested from us by violence without a struggle or be cheated out of them by the artifices of false and designing men. Basically, if you turn a blind eye to it, it's a black mark on your generation. He goes on, let us remember that if we suffer tamely a lawless attack upon our liberty, we encourage it and involve others in our doom. The short version is if you turn a blind eye to usurpations of power, to constitutional violations, maybe you like the outcome. Maybe you like the party or the team that's in charge that's doing it. Maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's a small one and you're just okay with it. Or it's not, it doesn't affect you personally or your family or your income. Whatever the reason is, if you turn a blind eye to it, Samuel Adams, I think, was correct. And then if you take that into consideration with what Dickinson said, you encourage it and then you're also setting a precedent for it to happen again. You have the precedent and then you encourage more. Now we're moving forward to 1775, Adams' cousin John was writing in response to a guy named Daniel Leonard, who wrote a series of essays who was uh, asserting authority of parliament over the co colonies. And he was basically kind of ripping on people there who were opposing uh, attacks on tea. Uh, I think he was basically putting it down like it was, this is such a small thing. Why are you making such a big deal out of it? And he says, quote, Adam says, is the three pence upon tea our only grievance? And if you think about this idea of setting precedent and his, what his cousin had to say a few years earlier about turning a blind eye, encouraging more violations, even the smallest violation of rights is bad. And I should pull this up again. All these links are in the show notes over at tenthamendmentcenter.com slash goodmorningliberty. If you're watching live, that generally gets posted anywhere from a half hour to an hour after the show is done airing. So John Adams goes on, and again, this is in 1775. Obsta principius, I think is how you say it in Latin. It's a Latin phrase, and this is from Mike Meharry. He wrote this article. A Latin phrase meaning withstand beginnings or resist the first approaches or encroachments. Colloquially, Mike says, we would say nip it in the bud, which is the exact phraseology Adams used. And if you actually look up, you Google that Latin term, you'll find that it was used a bunch of times. John Quincy Adams used it many years later, signing off in letters to his father and on and on. And John Adams actually used it before uh, 1775, but I thought this was really good. And Mike wrote this great article on it as well. So Adams says this, quote, Nip the shoots of arbitrary power in the bud is the only maxim which can ever preserve the liberties of any people. Basically, you turn a blind eye to something, you will never preserve liberty. You have to nip it in the bud. And Mike puts it this way. When you allow a government to chip away at the limits on its power, eventually the dam will burst. You will end up with a government exercising virtually unlimited authority, which is arbitrary power. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? And here's how Adams puts it. When the people give way, their deceivers, betrayers, and destroyers press upon them so fast that there is no resisting afterwards. Next up is what uh, we know as a, a big opponent to President Adams, and that is Thomas Jefferson. And in his notes on the state of Virginia, this is a quick one. At the end, he wrote, uh, end of this section, we published part of it over at 10th Amendment Center .com. He says, the time to guard against corruption and tyranny is before they shall have gotten hold of us. It is better to keep the wolf out of the fold than to trust to drawing his teeth and talons after he shall have entered. This is just repeating the same message. If you let the evil take hold, if you let the power take hold, it will always grow and grow and grow, and it becomes far more difficult to stop it down the line. We are certainly in a place where taking out the teeth and talons are very, very difficult. It might most likely, if we're able to succeed for liberty in the long run, I believe we will, I don't think it's going to be in our lifetime, but we're setting the foundation to do so going forward. And the last one, the fifth one, comes from George Washington. I did an entire episode on the forgotten warning of his farewell address. This article also from Mike Meharry. He puts this uh, in context. He says, those who embrace – this was 1796 – 
This was actually written by James Madison and Washington. Put it, Washington had his own draft, but he went with Madison's version. He says, those who embrace the idea of a living, breathing constitution, Mike writes, argue that it must be flexible to change with the times. But George Washington wasn't ignorant of this fact. He admitted the need for flexibility, but insisted that change must happen within the constitutional system itself through the amendment process, not via political maneuvering by the government itself. So basically rewriting the constitution, making it fit with the times or fit with whatever's popular or whoever has power can make it fit. And that's the latter version is what we've seen play out for decades, 1940 and beyond, 1913, uh, since the war between the states. I mean, this has really been picking up steam for a long, long time. And Washington warned us, just like Adams, Adams, Jefferson, Dickinson, and many, many others, actually. He said, let there be no change by usurpation. Usurpation, that is, taking power, stealing power that government isn't authorized to have. Let there be no change by usurpation. For through this, for though this, in one instance, may be the instrument of good, it is the customary weapon by which free governments are destroyed. The precedent must always greatly overbalance in permanent evil any partial or transient benefit which the use can at any time yield. And he's warning against allowing usurpation, turning a blind eye to the growth of power in government, even if you like the results. Because just like John Dickinson said, a single concession is the precedent which will lead to more and more down the line. And that's how, personally... I look at everything. I look at everything with that long game in mind, with the idea of, okay, what can they do with this in the long run? Because if you don't look at it that way, that's how the founders taught us to look at it. That's how the founders warned us about looking at everything. Because if you don't, you're, you're actually supporting, you're turning a blind eye, you're encouraging more and more in the future. So I hope you guys found this really interesting, educational, insightful. You can read the full papers, letters, uh, the articles that I've talked about here over at 10thamendmentcenter.com slash goodmorningliberty. Again, if you support the show, smash the like button. Continue leaving some comments, whether it's live or in the archive. Hit the notification bell if you're on YouTube or elsewhere iTunes, Spotify, all the reviews coming in have been amazing. I'm very grateful for that. It's helping us pick up steam. All these platforms are easily triggered. So these free actions that you can take definitely tell the platforms to show the program to more people. And for those of you who want to kick in a few bucks, you can become a member for as little as two bucks a month. It's very important to us. We operate on a small budget. It's 10thamendmentcenter.com slash members to do that. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you have an awesome weekend. Thank you so much. And I'll see you next week here at Good Morning Liberty.